Dental expansion is easy to obtain with almost any appliance. So, I will concentrate my effort on skeletal expansion. Maxillary expansion have been used for more than a century in order to harmonize maxilla and mandible transverse dimension. It is easy to obtain in young patients, but adult patients due to suture interdigitation are more challenging. Until recent, SARPE was the only option for adult patients with introduction of mini implant anchor devices necessity for surgically assisted rapid palatal expansion was reduced. Maxillary expansion can be done in slow maxillary expansion, rapid maxillary expansion and can be surgically assisted. Indications for maxillary expansions are Skeletal discrepancy bigger than 4 mm. Crossbite or lack of this crossbite if posterior teeth are in compensation. In class 3 combined with protraction. In cleft patients with collapsed maxilla. In patients with constricted airways. And in patients with obstructed sleep apnea. In 2009, an American Association of Orthodontists white paper stated the orthodontist is well positioned to perform an OSA screening assessment and refer at risk patients for diagnostic evaluation. Once the diagnosis of OSA is confirmed, physicians and advanced practice providers supervised by physicians may prescribe orthodontic appliances or procedures in appropriately selected adult patient as part of OSA management. Rapid maxillary expansion produces high forces, traumatic separation of mid-palatal suture, impingement, bite opening, inability to correct rotated molars, requires cooperation for activation, tends to relapse, it produces microtrauma in TMJ, root resorption, dehiscence, recessions, and pain. Rapid palatal expansion effect on maxilla. It's opening the suture and the opening is not parallel. It's more in anterior than in posterior area. And it's more open occlusal than apical. Maxilla is displaced downward and forward. Palatal vault is lowered and buccal tipping of posterior teeth is produced. And of course, we are going to have as a result a diastema. Maxillary expansion appliances that we are using may be tooth-borne expanders and the most known is the Hyrex expander. Tooth and tissue borne expanders, for example, Haas, and hybrid and or bone borne expanders like PSM or maxillar skeletal expander. Tooth borne expander, and this is slow maxillary expansion in a patient performed with quad helix which can also be used for maxillary expansion. In this case, quad helix Wilson was used and it has the advantage of vertical slots with very good torque control. It is made out of blue algaloid and it provides approximately 500 gram of force for uh, one centimeter of expansion. After five months, you can observe the expansion gained and you can also observe some dental tipping of the molars. Another very used 
stood born expander is the Hirax expander and it has very good results in young patients. Tooth and tissue born expander, the most common type is the HUS and this expander applies forces on teeth as well as on soft tissues. Forces are spread on bigger surface and it is considered more effective. Hybrid expanders. Hybrid expanders are anchored with TADS to palatal bone and they have dental component that it is rigid in transverse dimension. Forces are transmitted to the bone as well as to the teeth. This is a pen type hybrid expander. Pure bone borne expanders are anchored only on TADS. Expander force is delivered strictly to the bone and in this way dental side effects are avoided. Bone bore expanders, maxillary skeletal expander uh, is considered bone borne expander although it has the extensions to the molars. There was a comment on an article in AGODO on MSC being or not bone borne expander. Response was that the extension to molars are just to increase three-dimensional stability and prevent torquing after suture is ruptured. Extensions to molars are made out of soft wire and are easily bent. Things don't always work as planned. In this case, I lost some anchorage on the left side and the first molar started to tip. At first, I bent the extension with 3 prone plier and on the second appointment, I just cut off the extension. In the day I stopped the expansion, I applied my bracket system. It is imperative to maintain expander as retainer for at least three months after the expansion is stopped. I will discuss more on bone borne appliances in Rome. Research shows us that greater expansion is achieved in lower part of the mid face than in the upper that zygomatico maxillary complex showed forward and downward displacement and in his research Dr. Daniele Cantarella shows that in late adolescence expansion with maxillar skeletal expander is almost parallel anteroposteriorly and one half of anterior nasal spine moved more than the contralateral side. Also Pterygopalatine suture was split. Those are all the more reasons to use bone bore or hybrid expanders. <laughs>